but can be mistaken as diaphragmatic hernia with say staphylococcal cyst or a cystic adenomatoid malformation which is made up of multiple cysts. So what you look at is the bowel pattern in the abdomen. Is it continuous with the bowels? Up there are these shadows in the chest are in continuity with the bowel shadows in the abdomen which will say that okay these are the bowels only. To look for the dome of the diaphragm on the left or right side. If you can see the dome of the diaphragm, then you know that this is supradiaphragmatic or infradiaphragmatic. If you cannot make out the dome of the diaphragm, think about that this could be a diaphragmatic uh, herniation with the bowels that have gone up. Now there are other things also which you need to do, investigate is 2D echo etc. which will tell you whether there is an associated cardiac anomaly, any other ultrasound for the kidney, ureter, bladder to look for any renal anomalies. All these things have to be ruled out. Then you say, okay, this is diaphragmatic hernia with or without associated anomaly. First things to do is NICU stabilization with or without ventilator. Then go for surgery once the child is stable. Now for making the child stable, you first, first need to have a lot of blood gases and all that which I am not going to talk to you because that's useless. But after stabilizing the child based on the blood gas levels, etc., then only we opt for surgery. Now, once we do the surgery, it's paradoxical. It's getting stuff on paradoxical. You want my uh, history? Just, just do that. Uh, one announcement. We are going to have this series continue. So, all of you can just drop in your visiting cards at the registration there. So whoever is interested will be contacted for the next series. And your feedback about what topics you all want us to cover. So according to that we will set up the series. So that was the announcement that I had to make. Uh, why we are doing this? Just uh, for your information, um, I don't know how many of you all have ever gone on this site, pediatric con call, and please register as doctors. The reason being that uh, there are certain uh, presentations and details which are meant to be viewed by only medical people, not by the parents, because there are a lot of uh, um, articles and uh, information meant for parents on, on the site also. Besides, there are certain ones which are only restricted to access by medical personnel. And therefore, you need to register free of charge on the site, give all your details. Once you are registered, you will be given a password, etc. So that any time you wish to go on that site, you just type your password and you are on to the site and you can access all the medical side of the um, presentations, whether they are medical, surgical, whatever. Some of the surgicals which I have given, I have got a voiceover along with, so you will need, um, what shall I say, earphones, etc. So that you can plug in, switch it on, download it and then Hear as well as see on the slide. So please register if you have not yet registered and write down your password somewhere so that uh, you don't forget it. Otherwise, every time they may not remember. Malformation. 
which again can be mistaken for a diaphragmatic hernia and if you explore, we explore through the abdomen, you will find an intact diaphragm and you will start wondering where is the diaphragmatic hernia reduced. So, you have to be careful about this. If in doubt, you may do a dye study or a CT, HRCT if, if the patient is affording. If the patient is not affording, just do a barium or a pondre study and see that some of the pondre loops are up there, which is rarely done, but if, if required, if, if in doubt, it's better to do it. Another thing is be careful about, because I have gone through this bad experience, that sometimes the radiology <coughs> technicians, they say, no, 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 this must be left side, so they, they put the left on the right side, and then you end up exploring the wrong side. And we have done this in KM once, and uh, it was a horrible experience, because we said, where is the diaphragmatic Varnyabha? Lung is intact, the diaphragm is intact. Then we open the other side and we found the diaphragmatic hernia. So please be very careful about sides of the uh, X-ray as well as whether the bowel shadows are in continuity and there is no loop seal. So you want the No, that's fine. Let's change that. See now, echocardiography. There are certain things which are of prognostic sign for uh, diaphragmatic, which I am not going to do. But we need to do it to look for abnormal cardiac anomalies as well as for um, prognostic features. Next. Now, as I said, presentation within six hours, even at the best center, is only a 60% survival. Which means even at the best centers, 40% die in spite of coming to the right center, getting the right treatment, undergoing even ECMO, everything. If they present after 24 hours, see the paradox I was talking about. The later they present, the better is the prognosis because that means for 24 hours their lungs were able to take care of them. And then they started having dyspnea, tachypnea, whatever it is. So therefore the chances are that these lungs are not so bad. And therefore if you operate these children after a little bit stabilization, you may come out without any problem. Next. Now, as I said, what is the current approach looking at the diaphragmatic hernia in a newborn, especially in the first six hours, or antenatal if it is NICU critical care, endotracheal intubation, ventilator. Mandatory. Just put him on ventilator if the child is not maintaining oxygen levels properly. Just straight paralyze and put him on ventilator. But start with very low pressure. See, if this is a diaphragmatic hernia and the lungs are bad, you put regular pressure, then you are going to burst those lungs. So the pressures have to be very low so that the lungs don't over expand or the pressures are not so high that the lungs will just give way. High frequency is so that, like Ira was explaining, if you take more breaths, but the pressures are low, you will get in the same oxygen. So ultimately you do a high pressure, a high uh, number of breaths per minute with low pressures and the oxygen levels will gradually come up, the CO2 levels may fall. And then you have a stable child, then operate. Next. Now again, as I said, delayed versus emergency, it's not any longer a fire brigade emergency. So the moment you diagnose diaphragmatic hernia, you do not shift the child to the operating theater. So minimally sur invasive surgeons. So abdominal viscera, as I said, have been seen to move even antenatally up and down from the abdomen to the chest. So therefore, getting the, uh, the herniation out and closing the defect has no real value. Reduction of the hernia content also is seen just after giving paralysis with positive pressure because that is not the cause of the whole problem. And very often you find opposite side hypoplasia in spite of diaphragmatic hernia being on one side which means it is the lung problem and not the herniation which is at fault. Next. Okay. The same thing is barotrauma is caused by high pressure ventilation, so therefore avoid excessive pressure in the ventilator. This is how it looks. That There you can see the defect through which the bowels have gone up, after which you gradually reduce it, you see the defect, 
you take multiple stitches, close the defect, check the bowel because very often with diaphragmatic hernia you may have a mal rotation of the gut. So correct the mal rotation at the same time, fix the gut and then close the abdomen. Next. This is a tubelet. So switch it on, then it you know, takes some time and then this. Okay, this is how it actually looks like. That is the peritoneum head up. That's the edge which you can see, the edge of the defect through which they have gone up. Next, please. That is the edge of the defect where you can see better now the bowels are being reduced. Next, please. Alright, now you can see the anterior edge, you can see the posterior edge, I don't know at the back whether you can. You are supposed to say yes. <laughs> and, and that is where the edges have to now come together. Next. That is the lung which is just about seen here. Now another bad habit which we used to have is tell the anesthetic inflate the lung, they make a lung acha don't ever do that because these are bad lungs. You try to inflate, you rupture the lungs post-operatively, this child is saying bye. Next. Okay, this is after the defect has been sutured completely after keeping an intercostal drain. Always we keep an intercostal drain because there is a lot of air outside the lung but in the thoracic cavity which has to be gradually pushed out as the lung is expanding. It should not be sucked out because that will cause the lung to hyperinflate, rupture and cause problems. Next. That is how the wound looks. Very often because these are neonates with, who will be in environment for longer period, we put in an umbilical catheter which is like a central line so that we can give hyperalimentation, we can give uh, IV fluids, we can give antibiotics etc. right through this only. We don't need to keep pricking the child all over. Next. See, this was the child, another one with a bad diaphragmatic hernia, left-sided. This was how it looked. This uh, child was uh, operated upon and then uh, went home successfully. Next, please. Yeah, that was the child. He was put on a ventilator. All diaphragmatic hernias post-operative mandatory ventilation for at least two to three days before you start weaning or think of.